Welcome to the video on random forest models. In this video, we'll cover everything you need to know in order to get started with random forest models. To start off, if you haven't watched the pattern matching video yet, I would suggest you do so. It's a great introduction to the audio analysis tools that Arumon has, and it gives a great explanation of the difference between pattern matching and random forest models. Now to get started with random forest models, the first thing you're gonna need to do is go back to your visualizer tab and you'll select training sets. Remember, training sets are different from templates because training sets are for random forest models and templates are for pattern matching. Now, there are two different ways to create a training set. The first of which is under the visualizer tab. And the other one is when you're viewing all of your training sets under data. But I'll show you how to do it while you're in the visualizer tab. You'll select the training sets and have the pull down open up and then select the plus button. Name your new training set. And by default, the type will be region of interest. And then select the sound. Just like we learned in the video to make a template, it's really important that you select the best example of the call. We recommend that you actually look through and validate this presence of your species and all of your recordings before you select the training set. That's because when you're looking to validate whether the species is there or not, you can actually see which recording is the best for your training set. I've already gone through and found a great example of the call I'm looking for. So we'll just select very close around where this recording is and I'll hit add data. Now you can see on the training set on the left here, we now have a data point. Make sure to use as few training sets as possible for a specific species call. The reason for this is the more variation in the species call, the less efficiently your random forest model is going to run. At the very most, if you are having difficulty finding calls that are good, use a maximum of three training sets for a call. Once you have added this training set, you can go back to the data tab and we'll select training sets. Now you can see that we have our species one training set right here. Once you press on it, you can see the part of the audio that we selected here and how many validations we have for it. To make a good training set, make sure you have at least 50 presence validations and 50 absence validations. So we'll go back to the visualizer and make sure that we validate each of our recordings, which you can do by selecting species presence validation, others, and you can see my species one right here, and you can select present or absent. We recommend 50 presences or 50 absences in order to make a training set that actually works for you. If you create more than one training set for a call in a recording, you'll see that they're both listed over here. And you can see which one is which by selecting them and the box will become highlighted. Again, use a maximum of three regions of interest. If you create more than one region of interest, you can delete them by going back to the data tab and you can press delete ROI. I'm now going to switch over to a larger project so we can see what it will look like when your project has more training sets. You can go through and view the information for each of your training sets by selecting it like we saw before. When you select it, you can see the name, the species sound, how many validations you have, and the number of regions of interest. This is useful for when you're going to run a random forest model because then you can distinguish between which of your training sets you're actually going to want to use. Additionally, when you select one of your training sets, you can press on the magnifying glass and that will give you a detailed view of each of your regions of interest. You can download your regions of interest as an Excel spreadsheet by clicking the download icon. The tools you can use to manipulate your training sets are up in the left corner here. You can either create a training set, edit your training set, or delete your training set. If you select edit, you can change the name or the species sound. Let's learn how to make an actual random forest model. The random forest models uses the template that you just created and it uses information like the bandwidth, the upper frequency and the lower frequency to traverse each of your recordings and see if this region of interest matches up anywhere. The software decides whether there's a match or not by comparing different parts of the data. It takes into account the mean, the median, the minimum, maximum, standard deviation, the maximum minus the minimum, the skewness, kurtosis, hyperskewness and hyperkurtosis, histogram and cumulative frequency histogram. These are used in conjunction with your validations in order for the program to decide whether or not there's a match. Now to get on with actually creating a random forest model. We'll go over to the analysis tab and make sure you're on the random forest model section. You can see I already have a lot of random forest models in my project. Now to create your first random forest model. Select the plus button next to random forest model. And then you'll enter your model name. And I'll just name this one test number five. Don't worry about the classifier. That one, you only have one choice anyway. And then choose your training set. So this will go back to uh, the training set that we just created. Now you'll select the training set that you would like to use. You have the name of the training set and the species and the sound. 
and then the number of regions of interest. So we'll just select this first one here. This is when the validations really comes into play. It only uses the recordings from your training set to make your random forest model. Therefore, the more validations you have, the better your random forest model is gonna be. You can see here in my training set, I've got a little over a thousand for both presence and absence validations. And a good rule of thumb is to use 70% in your fitting and then use 30% in your validation. That number can vary a little bit. You can use between 70 and 80% for your fitting and then just use the rest in your validation. So I'll just use 700 and 700, and then we'll use the rest in our validations, which automatically fills. Then you can press create. This random forest model is then going to be applied to all of your data. So to think about it in another way, you have your training set, which then helps create your random forest model, which then can be applied to all of your audio recordings. So the random forest model is the thing that actually analyzes your audio, which we can then view the results from in the classifications. To view the status of your random forest model, we can go over to jobs. It will take several minutes for your job to complete. To find your most recent random forest model, select last updated. And then you can see test number five is at the top here. The state is completed. I've waited a few minutes for that to complete. And now you can go back to the analysis tab. Again, we're gonna sort by date. Now that the random forest model job has finished running, we can go back to the analysis tab and select it. Here you can see all of the details. You can see the information about the training set. And here you can see the results of your model. Under the model validation details, you can see all of the information that you put in when you were setting it up. So how many presence and absence validations you used, and then how many of each you used in the fitting and in the verification. This is the important part right here, the statistics. So the accuracy right here indicates overall how often your classifier was correct. The precision is how often our model was correct when it predicted that the species was actually present. So 89% of the time it said that the species was present, it was actually correct. And then it was 87% correct when it said the species was present or absent. And then to read this little table down here, the model was correct 288 times when it predicted that it was there. And then it was correct 354 times when it said it wasn't there. It was incorrect 35 times and 55 times when it incorrectly said that it was absent or present. Once this page loads, it will say validations and we'll have a download symbol next to it. And then you can download the results of your random forest model. Now let's see how we actually apply this model to a playlist full of recordings that we wanna analyze. We'll go over to the classifications tab. And we'll create a new classification. We'll write the name, which I'll just put as an example. We'll select the model, which we'll use the test five that I just created. And then we'll select the playlist that we want to apply it to. Make sure you've already created a playlist that has the audio that you would like to analyze and make sure that it has less than 20,000 recordings in it. If you remember, you can create a playlist under the data tab up there by filtering through your recordings. So then I'll select this first playlist and we'll press create. Now name your classification. Select your model. We'll use our test five one that I just created and then select your playlist that you would like to apply it to. I'm going to use BCL01 because it only has 1200 recordings in it. And then you can select create. Just like when you created your random forest model, you can see the progress of your classification over in the jobs tab. Another thing to note about the jobs tab is you can see which type of job it was by the dot on the left side. It's either a model training, a model classification, a soundscape analysis, which we haven't learned about yet, pattern matching, or convolutional neural network, which we also haven't learned about yet. So ours is going to have a red dot next to it. You can unselect the other ones if you'd like to only see your classifications. Now that our job has been completed, we'll go back into our analysis tab and look at test one. Let's look at the details. So you can see the name and the playlist that I've applied the random forest model to. And then let's look at the results. When we applied our random forest model to our playlist, BCL01, it found that 905 of the recordings did not have our species call that we were looking for. 349 of them did have the species call we were looking for. And then it tells you how many of the recordings it actually went through. You can see the nice little infographic to see the proportion of how many were present versus how many were absent. And then additionally, if you would like to look more into the results, you can show the details per recording. It tells you the recording name and whether the model determined whether the call was in this audio clip or not. You can download the results from your classification by pressing the download CSV file. 
The last thing you can do to improve your classifications results even more is if you go back to the data tab, we can create a new playlist that has the results and then manually go through and listen for if it's a false positive or a false negative. Like we learned to do in one of the earlier videos, we'll set a filter, we'll go to the classification and I'll select test one because that's the one I just showed you. And you can select whether the result was present or absent and I'll just select present for now. Apply filters and we'll save it to a playlist and we'll name the playlist. And now that I've created my playlist, let's go back to the visualizer tab select browse recordings by playlist, and then we'll select the playlist. Now you can go through your recordings and listen to them each individually to verify whether your call was actually in the recording or not. And this has been how you can use your random forest model to analyze all of your different recordings.